Bless us now, Lord, as we preach the word of the Lord. May we do no damage to the word, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoying my portion of the earth. God bless those who are streaming with us. We thank the Lord for you and those who will hear this message through our various ministry outlets. God bless you. Thank you for listening and watching and sharing with us. Thursday night in the message entitled The Meek, and if you weren't here, I pray that you get that message. Uh, the Lord blessed us. Uh, Sister Rosalind, so good to see you. God raised you up. God is so good. Saints, if, if there's ever been a warrior for Christ, that pretty lady right there is one. Stand up and just take a bow. I want the people to see how the Lord just raised her up and brought her back. Amen. Look like you've been away on vacation. And come dressed up too. Amen. You don't appear that you've been fighting for your life. But the Lord, God is faithful. Isn't the Lord good? God is so good. I'm glad for you. I'm glad for you. God bless Brother Ghana. Amen. So glad to see him in service today. Recently had surgery and ran into some complications, but the Lord fixed it. Glad for you, man. Amen. Brother Andre, burials. God is faithful. To God be the glory. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. And if anyone else, I'm overlooking. Thank God. These are just victories, victories, victories. But uh, we, we talked about the meek last on Thursday night, and we discovered some very important things that our Lord said about meekness. And one of the things that we discovered is that meekness is not weakness. By no stretch of the imagination, we discovered and discussed that the meek are strong. Strong. We're not weak at all. That meekness as used here refers primarily to our attitude toward God. Toward God. Now that, the Bible speaks of our meekness with, with regard to our attitude toward others. But when Jesus was speaking here, the, the, the meekness uh, that he's speaking of is our being meek in our attitude toward God. And that meekness is the attitude or the temper of spirit in which we accept his dealings with us as the product of his omnipotence, his omniscience, and his absolute love for us. And that is we accept it whether we understand what's going on or not. We accept God's love and the Lord's omnipotence, his, his being all powerful and his omniscience, his being all knowing when he allows things to come our way that we like, that agrees with us, that we appreciate. We say, man, God is good. Uh, but, but true meekness is, is when you keep that same attitude when things are going on that you don't like, that we, we, that we don't understand, you know. Uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the key things that, that the Bible tells us about how God deals with us and keeps us successful is one of the major things that we fight. The Lord promised, says, every tree in me that bringeth forth good fruit, every tree. Not one or two, but every tree. He says, the Father purges. That it brings forth more fruit. But when we go through a purging process. See, when you purge, you take away. We assume that all subtraction is bad. We assume that when things fall off, something's wrong. When, so, when he promised among the things that he would do when things are going right is he will purge you so that they can keep going right. And, and, but the purging process is not a process of, 
of uh, addition. It's not a pro process that is pleasing. When you're being purged, it doesn't always look good. Praise the Lord. There are, there are stages in every haircut. In every hairdo, from time, God bless you, uh, my sister. Yeah, you know who I'm talking to. That pretty lady with that pretty red, huh? Gibson. Yeah, Lord bless. This is your first day back, ain't it? Glad to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I look around, I see the saints. And I just get out of my sermon, then I jump back in. I love you, and I thank God for every one of you. And uh, see, sometimes I get a list, sometimes I don't. Because sometimes, you know, some people, they don't, they don't necessarily require that you call their names. And, and, and they may not send a note. And then there are others that... Uh, I get three notes, so... But, you know... But so in, 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 in the process of a haircut, in the process ladies of getting your hair done, in the process of getting fixed up, during the process, you don't look, you don't look as good as you look in the, now. Uh, uh, in the process, some of you look very different in the process than you do by the finished product. Am I right? Hey Amen. I'm not going to go into it, but it's a process. Sometimes a process that take all day. But at the end of the process, oh, you step out looking all grand. Well, in Christ, life is a process. Amen. Bless you, my brother. It's a process that, that, that takes you from one place to the other. And, and it, there are steps in the process. That doesn't look as good as other steps in the process. But if you let it play out, uh, you're blessed. And notice this. Regards to why you are, ladies, in that process with that beautician, you don't fall out or get out that chair and leave or get in a fight, hopefully. Somebody said, well, I have. <laughs> They didn't do right, but in most cases, you have you endure the process, you stay in the chair, amen. And then when everything is done and everything is set right, you pay and you leave and you leave happy when it goes right, and that's life's process. Well, 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 serving the Lord, serving the Lord, uh, meek, being meek toward Him is understanding that He manages our lives. And he's the one, he's the beautician, he's the barber. He's the one who takes us through the process. He knows when cutting, where he's headed, when styling, uh, when gluing, when attaching, when removing, when weaving. He knows. Praise the Lord. What they're doing to get you where you want to be. Amen. So there's this, this meekness is an attitude. It's a temper. It's an attitude, a temper of the spirit in which we accept his dealings with us as the product of his omnipotence and his omniscience and his love. We learn that meekness toward God is faith toward God. It's trust in him. Lord, Lord, as you manage my life and manage my affairs and take me from point A to point B, I got to trust, oh God, that you know what you're doing. Even when I don't know what you're doing, I trust that you know what you are doing. We're taught now not to trust God. The man thank, thank God got it wrong and put uh, a, a woman's spirit in his male body. Now you know it's messed up. It's messed up. You can't even trust God. Oh yeah, I got to keep it before you. You know why? Because Hollywood keeps it before you. 
The talk shows keep it before you. The view keeps it before you. The chew keeps it before you. All of them keep it before you. You get upset with me for keeping it, keeping it before you because they're winning in your mind. And you're saying, he ought to just leave that alone and, and, and just move on to something else. That's because you've accepted it. See, you, you've allowed the enemy to convince you that a man can turn himself into a woman. That's the devil. That's the devil conquering. He has conquered your spirit in that area. But saints, we ought not to wave the white flag of surrender. We ought not to wave the yellow flag of being a coward. We ought to stand our ground and say, God got it right. See, if you can't trust him, if you can't trust him in major issues, we can't trust him in anything. If we can't trust God with the definition of marriage, then we most certainly can't trust him with larger issues. So this is the way the devil works. He's like, operate. Satan comes against you in one way. And if he can get you to doubt God in one thing, just one thing, one thing, then he, he knows what Paul said. Paul said a little leaven. Leaveneth the whole lump. So what, what, the, the, what the skilled seer does is he keeps the fight where it should be. And you don't secretly surrender and all of a sudden you don't talk about it no more when it is the thing that Satan is trying to drive down people's throats. The devil will make you think that everybody now is a homosexual. And that the, that the, the homosexuals are, uh, are all over the world. I'll tell you where they are. They, they're packed in Hollywood. Yes, sir. Say it. Right. Say it. That's where they are. They're packed in the entertainment com uh, community. They're, they're packed. Uh, they control. They, they work in communications and in the media. And they know how to send projections to you and make you think certain things and make you think that you can't trust God with the definitions with, with, with sexuality. You can't trust God with the definition of marriage. You can't trust God when it comes to gender. You can't trust God. Well, if you can't trust God with all these things, what can you trust God for? Can't trust him with life, so you kill yourself. Can't trust, I mean, well, what's the point? The devil is a liar. You can trust the, the God of the Bible with everything. He said, blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be like a tree planted. Good God Almighty, he shall be like a tree planted. That'll shout right there. A tree planted by the waters that spread out its roots by the river. Then I heard him say, he won't see when the heat cometh, but the leaves shall be green, and he shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither, neither shall cease from yielding her fruit. Bless God, bless God. Jeremiah chapter 17. Let, let me get to this and move on right quick. Uh, uh, the, the, this, this meekness, uh, it is the belief that no matter what happens, God knows what he's doing. In other words, the meek life is the God-controlled life. Oh, yes. Uh, meekness, I said this Thursday night, and I'll say it to you. Meekness is thinking yourself, and I'm just going to say it. I said it Thursday night, I'm going to say it tonight. Take a chance. You throw a shoe at me, I'm gonna throw the shoe back at you. Okay? I want I want I want I want to I want to preface this. Meekness is thinking yourself small and acting in that spirit. In the relationship between me and the Lord, I'm the small. The God of the Bible has controlling interests in this company. It ain't no 51% controlling interest either. It's like 95%. So you got to take it down a notch. We're all a little too full 
of ourselves. We feel like we have something that God can use. We don't. Feel like we have a gift that God has to have. We don't. Everything you have, the Lord gave it to you. Well, I'm smart. He gave you that. I can sing. He gave you the voice. I can play music. He gave you that ability. Oh, you worked it out, but he gave it to you. I can preach. He anoints me. Amen. See ourselves meekness consist of seeing yourself small. Sammy Morris story goes a crew boy from Africa. The crew uh, were a sect of, uh, uh, of Liberi Liberians from Liberia. Came to America to be trained for Christian service. Story goes he presented himself for matriculation at Taylor University. He revealed a spirit all too rare among Christians. When the president of the university asked him what room he wanted, Sammy, the little African boy, who was brought to be trained as a missionary, replied, if there is a room nobody else wants, Give it to me. If there is a room nobody else wants, give it to me. Of this incident, the president later wrote, I turned away, for my eyes were full of tears. I was asking myself whether I was willing to take what nobody else wanted. In my experience as a teacher, I have had occasions to assign, to assign rooms to more than a thousand students. Most of them were noble, Christian young ladies and gentlemen, but Sammy Morris was the only one of them who ever said, if there is a room that nobody wants, give it to me. End of story from the book, uh, The Pursuit of Happiness. You, you have to admit, uh, Sammy is rare because most of us wouldn't want the room no one else wants, wanted because we think uh, too highly of ourselves than that. Pros is the Greek word for uh, meek. It's to be humble and mild. As used here, it's humble and mild or humble and, and a humble and mild response and attitude toward God for the things that he allows to happen in our lives. It is a humble and mild response to God for the things that he allows to happen in our lives, whether we like them or not, whether we understand them or not, whether we agree with them, it is to accept them from a loving, sovereign Savior. It's not that you don't try to fix the situation, but it is that you don't get mad with God. The meek never says to God, what are you doing, Lord? God, you better get this right. The meek never secretly gets angry with God and stop coming to church. The meek never allows life circumstances to cause them to say, as was popular back in the 80s, I, I heard uh, on the uh, PTL club, uh, they were saying to their audience, some of you need to learn to forgive God. Forgive God for what? God needs no forgiveness. Lord, I'm still upset that you took my mother. You ought to thank him for giving you a mother. Thank him for the time that you had. And be grateful that he didn't take you. Because I guarantee you, if the roles were reversed, mom would be asking God, Lord, keep me, heal my heart, but you're still God. Amen. 
It's an attitude. I'll preach in just a moment. Toward God. Prowse is uh, the, uh, gives us power. Aristotle said, it is, it is a means between anger and indifference. It is being angry when we should, not at God. And uh, not angry when we shouldn't. Uh, and knowing the difference. Amen. Meekness concerns our disposition toward God and our estimation of ourselves. It is the ability or power, again, to see ourselves small. Meekness is the power. Hear me now. To enjoy what God sends our way. I want you to let that sink in. It is the ability to find the silver lining. To make the most of. To find delight in whatever situation God chose to send your way or to sin my way the power to make the most of the gifts that God has given us it is the power to recognize the blessings of the Lord power every one of us are in a different situation in life you know where you are you know, I know where I am Sister Carol, we know where we all are in life now some of you are upset about where you are. You don't have anything to live for. You're angry. Amen. Some praise the Lord for where they are because things are working out right right now, but you were mad yesterday because things weren't right. See, meekness is the power to whatever uh, is your lot. Uh, the song says, when peace like a river ascendeth, attendeth my way, attendeth my way. That's one. When sorrow like sea billows roll, that's contrast. They're not the same. Peace and sorrow. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. That's meekness. See, whatever my life. Glory to God. It's not that you won't work to change a bad lot, but that while in that lot, you still love the Lord. You still keep your praise. You still keep your shout. You still do like you're supposed to do because he's still God. And your faith is, Lord, I don't know, but I know you know what you're doing. The meek, the meek. Bible said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Notice here, it doesn't say the meek shall earn the earth. But shall inherit. Inherit. Whatever you inherit, yeah, an inheritance is a gift. Praise the Lord. An inheritance is not something that you work for. Am I right about it? It's a gift. One of the things that the Lord is telling us in this beatitude is to recognize his hand in everything we have on earth. When we see God's hand in it, we see the value of it. I want you to think about your current situation, where you are right now in your life. Do you see where you are as a gift from God? Or are we so busy trying to get delivered from it? Or are we so busy trying to turn uh, to the next page that we fail to see what the Lord is doing right now and that where we are uh, it is a gift from him 
He's handed you something. I said the other night, David said it was good for me to have been afflicted. For before I was afflicted, I went astray. See, there's a value in recognizing the worth, hallelujah, the value of where you are right now in this life. Man was trying to sell some real estate. Actually, trying to sell an estate. And he hired an advertisement company, an agency. And when the agency was ready with the commercial, the agency came and read the advertisement to the seller before they posted it. And when they read it to the seller, the seller said, read it again. And uh, they read it to him the second time. And when they read it to him the second time, he said, I have decided not to sell. I don't think I'm going to sell. And the agency said, why aren't you going to sell? He said, all my life, I've been looking for an estate just like this one. And didn't realize that I had, had it already. See, you, you don't see. You may not see how well off you are. I wish I could just hire an agency to draw your description, to draw out your family, to, 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 to put together your job, your, your situation, and then read it to you and read all of the benefits that the Bible says that we're not to forget. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Well, many times we fail to see the benefits. You should recognize the value of where you are right now and thank the Lord. Oh, God has given, given us precious gifts. Praise the Lord. But the issue is, do we recognize how well off we are? Do you recognize my brother with the roving eye that you have a good family? You've got a good wife. Wife, you have a good husband. Do you recognize that you have a good job? Do you recognize that you have good health? Do you recognize, praise the Lord, that God has given you another chance? Why are you complaining? Do you recognize that things could be much better, worse? Do you recognize that God have gifted you and handed you something? People would love to be as well off as you are. You say, Lord, ain't nothing right in my life. All oh, there are people who would give an arm and leg to be in your ain't nothing right position. But we fail many times to see the inheritance, the gift that God has given us. We complain too much. Oh my. See, this is why we need to be poor of spirit. This is why you need to, need to be meek. Because, see, in meekness, meekness causes you to see. And it causes you to see things the way you should see them. All of us are given the gift of life. All of us are given an inheritance of things. Some have much, some have little, but meekness allows us to see that God knows what's best for us and God knows what we need at this time. You may think that you should be better. You may think that you should be further along. You may think that you should be faring better. You think that you should be making more. You think that your house should be bigger. You think that your car should be longer. You think, you think that your ministry, you think this, 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 and this. But God knows what's best for you. And that's got to be in every believer. You got to give space. Got to at least give a little recognition that perhaps, perhaps it's not that God is moving too slow, it's that I'm moving too fast. He knows what's best for me. Hallelujah. See, some of us, you're not kicking against the devil, you're kicking against God, you're kicking against the prick. You can't win that fight. 
Bible says this, you know, uh, Ecclesiastes 5, 18 and 19, Behold, that which I have seen. He says, It is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labors that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. For every man also to whom God have given riches and wealth and have given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labors for this is the gift of God. Where you are right now, you are walking in your portion. Word portion means allotment, your inheritance, your part. Now, it may change over time. And it normally does. But you see, the thing is, if you don't learn how to be meek, when it changes, your praise will be hollow. See, I didn't learn, my mama's right there, I didn't learn to praise God when I got a, a big car. I was a praiser when I was walking. I didn't, I didn't learn to praise God. Ask any of them who were in the church when I first got saved. I didn't learn to praise God after God gave me a suit. I praised God when I didn't have clothes to wear. See, you, the, you, because I was where the Lord wanted me. You got to know how to praise him where you are. Oh, well, I'm waiting. If, if, Pastor, if I, was in, if I was in your shoes, I'd praise the Lord. No, you won't. Wouldn't because you won't praise him while you're in yours. Praise the Lord. I didn't, I didn't wait till the day to begin to give God praise. Praise the Lord. God's been good. He was good to me long before. Praise the Lord. He blessed me like he has. He was good to me in that 69 Chevrolet. He was good in that 74 uh, uh, Thunderbird that, that never ran right. He was just good. He's just good. Good in my used Mercury Marquis. He was good, good in the trailer. Pam and I had some of our greatest uh, praise uh, in the, that little trailer on that rented lot. Let me tell you something. You got to know how to appreciate your portion. Somebody shout, I'm enjoying my earth. It's your portion. It's, it's your portion. Now, now, it may change because God is good. He'll take you higher. But remember, remember, the Bible teaches us in Zechariah 4 and 10, in that, in that verse, it says, for who hath despised the days of small things. See, if you can't praise him when, it's, when you're in your small thing, if you can't praise him in that portion, you won't praise him when you get in a big thing because then you'll just want something bigger. If you can't praise him where you are, you'll never praise him when you get where you're going. I challenge somebody right now to praise the Lord where you are. for your family. Thank you for your dwelling place. Thank you for your home. Thank you for your job. Thank you for your money. Thank him whether it's small or great. Don't compare yourself. Be glad for what God ah, what the Lord has done for you. I'm in my portion. I'm in my portion. Glory to God. Amen. You, you got to know how to be happy where you are. See, some, some, I was listening to someone the other day, they were doing a dissertation. And they said one of the reasons many young people today don't have joy is that they want to start out in life where their parents ended up. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You ain't gonna skip. You got to go through the process like everybody else. 
Praise the Lord. Go on and be glad every step of the way. The Lord has me right here. I'm going to shout right here. And if God ever takes me up there, I'm going to shout up there. But wherever I am, I'm going to shout because I'm meek and I accept Accept what he allows. I'm going to praise him when the attendance is up. I'm going to praise him when it's down because he's still God. He's God when the sun is shining and he's God when it's raining. And I found out that we need rainy days just like we need sunshiny days. And sometimes we only act like God is good when the sun is shining. But we serve a God who sends the sun in the rain ah, yeah, yeah, yeah Lord Woo. well which is the most important well that depends on the conditions uh -huh. if there's a drought everywhere if all the all the water is dried up and the and the and the and the grounds are muddy, and the grounds are parched, and the water tables under the earth are dried up, and the lakes are going down. Another sunshiny day, although you're glad to see it, now you're beginning to pray for rain. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God who knows when it's time to send rain? And then when he, know, he knows when, when to turn to speak it off and then send a little sunshine. Thank you! And you got to learn how to thank him whether you're in the sunshine or the rain because that is your portion. Now, depending upon where you are on the scale, whether you're in small things, big things, or in between, if it's a God thing, give him praise for what he's done for you. Thank you, Jesus. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm enjoying God's gifts. I'm enjoying his gifts. His gifts. This, my, my, my clothes is a gift. My job is a gift. My dwelling place is a gift. My family is a gift. My health is a gift. All that I have, I've inherited. I've inherited it from him. Yeah! Yes! I, I feel my help. The, the, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says this about everything we have. I mean everything. The Bible says this about everything we have. Every large thing, every small thing, every valuable thing, every invaluable thing. Every article of clothing, every, the place where we are bold. The Bible says this about every dime you have and every dime that you don't have. The Bible says this about your educational level and the lack thereof. Somebody say everything. What are you talking about, preacher? First Corinthians seven and four. Four and seven says, who maketh thee? to differ from another. And what thou hast, thou, what hast thou rather, that thou hast not received? Now if thou hast received it, then why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? The point is, what do you have that God didn't give you? Thank you, Jesus. And since it is a gift from the Lord, then you ought to praise him for the gift. John 3 and 27 says, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. James 1 and 17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above. Good God Almighty, 1 Peter 4 and 10 says, as every man received a gift, even so minister, the same one to another. What is my point? Everything that we have, God has given it to us. We didn't earn it, even though you may have worked for it, but he gave you power to work. He gave you the ability to work. He's given you the mind to work. 
baby, hallelujah. He's given us natural abilities. It's all a gift. It's all an inheritance. And you ought to be thankful for the inheritance. Now the question is, are you able to praise the Lord for the presence that you presently have? I know you're waiting for the Lord to bless you tomorrow. I know you're waiting for the Lord to come through for you. But I have a question for you. Are you able to praise him for the presence, for the gifts that you presently have? Your present presence for what you have already, for where you are right now. Can you tell him thank you? Can you be appreciative? Can you shout? Can you say to God, Lord, I'm glad for what you've done for me, for it is my inheritance. If you can, praise him right now for your inheritance. Thank him for your hands, hands that will go up. Thank him for your legs, legs that will walk. Thank him for your mind, a mind that will think. Thank him for your car. It may not be brand new, but it got you here. Thank him for, hallelujah, that job. You could always make more, but you could always be making less. You better thank God for all, for all that he's done. Yeah. While you're thanking him, guess what you're doing? You're inheriting your earth. You are adjusting to the earth that he's given you. See, this is mine. This is mine. That's yours. Hallelujah. And you ought to thank him for what's yours. Hallelujah, meekness is the power to praise him. Good God Almighty, for what he's sent your way. Yes, it is for what he's given you. Let us thank him for what he's done. Let us stop. I'm almost finished and smell the coffee. Let us enjoy life. Good God Almighty, you got to get something out of the life that you're living. How many want to get something out of it? How many want to get something out of that life? The story goes this way. There was a young man who came to the preacher. He said, preacher, I want you to preach my brother's funeral. The preacher looked at him and said, I heard that your brother was a hard worker. The young man said yes. The preacher said, well, what did your brother get out of all of that hard work? The man said, well, he left houses and land. He died and left money in the bank. He left an expensive insurance policy. He left an inheritance for all of us. The preacher looked at the man and said, I didn't ask you, what did you get out of it? I asked you, what did he get out of it? See, some of us ain't getting nothing out of our life. We just gonna die and leave it to someone else. But the devil is a liar. I'm getting something out of this. I'm not just gonna die and leave it. What am I gonna get out of it? The satisfaction of recognizing that I serve a God who's been good to me. I serve a God who woke me up all of this morning, started me on my way, and have given me power to enjoy life, power to smile, to walk in victory, to adjust 
to whatever the situation. I need about 10 of you as I close this message to just begin to thank him for what he's done. For you are inheriting, you are inheriting your earth. Inherit the earth means the ability to enjoy whatever comes your way, whether it's little, whether it's much, whether it's large, whether it's small, it ought to be met with thank you Jesus, glory to God, we give you praise, we lift you up, thank you, I have joy, thank you, thank you. I need I need I need somebody who will say, well, Reverend, it's not it's not ideal for me right now. It's not ideal for me right now. But I've learned how to give the ideal response to situations that are not ideal. What is the ideal response to a situation? that's less than idyllic the Bible says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you what is the concerning you representing it points to two things number one he wants you to give thanks but number two the situation itself whether you like it or not God has determined that it's the best thing for you right now it's the best thing concerning you do you trust him with managing your life do you trust his decisions I'd rather be higher but he had me right where I am so therefore this is the best thing concerning me I'd rather oh Lord somebody said uh, be making a little more but there's no way right now so that this is the best thing concerning me good God almighty he's letting you fight cancer it could have killed you but he raised you up again and again it could have taken you out but God said not so. God said not so. Now I don't know why it happened, but he knows. Good God Almighty, and it's for the glory of God. And anything that's for the glory of God, it's the best thing concerning you. So right where you are, I'm trying to convince you that all we need all we owe the Lord today is a word of praise and a word of thanksgiving hands lifted voice lifted praise is going up thanking God for he knows where we are he knows the way we take ah he knows Woo! The Lord is not holding out on you. Your heart is deceiving you. We studied that today. You need to distrust the voice that's talking in your head. Because God don't hold out on people. That's what the devil told Eve. The Lord's holding out on you. God don't hold out. That's the, the devil does that. He has his time. He'll move in his time. Praise the Lord. He doesn't hold out. The, 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 the implication that God is holding out on you speaks of entitlement 
the entitlement mentality of the thinker. Because you're assuming that what you don't have, you deserve. And none of us do. We only deserve what he saw fit to give us. And when he saw fit to give it to him. I ain't going to tell you no lie. If I would have made jurisdictional bishop or even auxiliary the first time that it came around some 8 to 15 years ago, it would have been to my destruction. It would have gone to my head. It would have messed me up. I didn't see it then, but I, looking back now, you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for my response. I walked in meekness and didn't even know it. For I did not rebel. I did not stay home. I did not miss a meeting. I did not serve with an off spirit. For the most part, nobody ever knew that it had ever been offered. Never. And I said to my leader, when the time was right, the decision that you made toward me, I understand. Now, years later, when the time was right, God in the fullness of time then put something in my hand that I had matured and had a tough enough exterior and a strong enough mind and enough life experiences under my belt. So I thought I knew then. But you, only time teaches you what you really don't know. Because all of us think we know everything. Meekness will tell you there are things that you just don't know. Meekness will tell you that. Meekness will teach you there are things that God does that he won't, he won't explain it to you at the time. Oh no, I'm not going to do it. I want you, he won't explain it at the time. Now, it's not his test. It's yours. Thank you. <laughs> Meekness is accepting what the Lord allows to come your way and maintaining the proper attitude and temperament toward God. Inheriting the earth is when he allows it to come your way, you adjust yourself. See, God is not the adjustable wrench. We got to adjust. We adjust ourselves to make the most of what the Lord has done. At a crusade, a young person in a wheelchair was wheeled down to the front of the altar. And the song leader asks the person in the wheelchair, what is your favorite hymn? The wheelchair bound believer looked at the praise leader and gave glory to God, the name of their favorite hymn. The name of it was, it wasn't, I won't complain. Wasn't anything like that. The name of it was Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. Now, count your blessings. Woo! In a wheelchair, count your blessings. There was no entitlement there. There was no feel sorry for me. There was no look down on me because I'm like this. No, no, no woe is me. That person knew that they were blessed of God. And whether the Lord got them out of that chair or not, he's still God and he still can. And it doesn't mean that you don't have a life just because you're in a chair. The late Ray Charles said something. He wasn't a Christian, 
But Ray said, I would not trade all that has happened to me in my life just to be able to see. He thought that it was absurd. He said, I've, been, I've done all of this without sight. I wouldn't trade all that I've accomplished for sight. There are sighted people who haven't accomplished 1% of what that blind man accomplished. Blessed are the meek. The Lord told me to tell you, I'm out of time. Inherit your earth. Look around at what the Lord has done for you. Look at those blessings. Go home and look in the closet. Look at them old uh, things that are hanging up. See, we look at it now and oh, that's old. It's, uh, it's gone. But that was a time that you would say, oh, Lord, thank you. You got to go back there. See, you got to know how to appreciate God. Amen. Uh, no matter how old that car is, you ought to wash it. You ought to keep it clean because it was an inheritance. God gave it to you. And you promised him that if he would just bless you with a car. Lord, I'll take care of it. I'll do this, that, and the other. And he blessed you. And now that it has just a little Got a few miles on the speedometer. Now you treat the thing any kind of way. The dog won't ride with you. It's so dirty. No, you need to go back. You need to go back. And inherit your earth. Learn to enjoy what the Lord has given you. What the Lord has done. Don't live your whole life waiting for the next, the next, the next blessing, the next open door, the next. Uh-uh. Take time to enjoy the presence that you presently have. Thank you, Lord. For what we presently have. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for meekness. Meekness. That we would be pliable to you. Mild to you. The Lord says, as you get this, and I know in preaching this one, it's, it's hard to follow. That's why you got to get tape played over. You just listen to it. Because, see, some of you, you are agitated. I can look at you and see it. You're simmering just beneath the surface. You think you're hiding it, but it's as plain as day to anybody who has discernment. That's because you're trying to make something fit before the time. You let the Lord do it. You, you, you let God. Because you can't make him. God says, I want to, as you pray this prayer and as we go, flow in meekness, the anger will abate. God says, I want to relieve you of your frustration. Hallelujah. Bring your blood pressure down. Spare your kidneys. Spare your inner organs. Add to your lifespan. Hallelujah. 